What is up everybody, Dan Dan the Fireman here and I got four intermediate motorcycle riding tips for you so you can be a safer and more effective rider. So first and foremost, we all heard of the term ride like you're invisible. I kind of like that term. I don't like to pretend I'm invisible. I just like to pretend that people don't see me. There's a difference there. So drivers rarely see motorcycles. This isn't because they don't care about you or your life. They are experiencing inattentional blindness. There's this really awesome video that I always show on my live streams when somebody asks, you know, why didn't they see the motorcyclist? It's a great video. It's talked about selective attention. It's a bunch of people bouncing a basketball and there's a gorilla actually walking in between it. The goal is that you're supposed to count how many basketballs were passed between people. And when you do that, you never recognize the gorilla walking around. It's a lot like car drivers. Car drivers tend to only look for other cars, barely look for pedestrians, and they never or very rarely look for motorcyclists. They are trained to look for other cars on the road. Motorcyclists only take up 6% roughly of the motorists on the road, so why look for the people that are not really there ever? 6%, that's not a lot. So they are looking for other cars. It's not their fault, it's their brain literally saying, hey, don't look for them, let's focus on what's the priority, which is other vehicles on the road which tends to be other cars. To help drivers see you, choose lane positions and following distances that afford maximum sight distance. This will also provide you with a better vision of all the oncoming hazards. This is something I talk about in all my beginner tips and it's something that I talk about all the time in my ride along with Dan and the Fireman. When I go for a ride and I take you along with me, I show you and I tell you every little thing that I see and one of the biggest things is that I make sure that I am off to the sides or I can actually see ahead. If I can't see ahead, I always increase the space cushion. So just in case they decide to break on me or do anything, I have plenty of stopping distance and I have plenty of time to react. So number two is always have an escape path. Always, always, always have an escape path. If you're in a position where you don't have an escape path, you're in the bad position. Do not be there. Slow down, increase the space cushion that you normally would have. This way you're not pinched in traffic and people won't come into your lane. Increase that space cushion. A common instance of this happens at red lights and interstates. At the red light, position yourself off to the center of the car ahead of you so you can maneuver around it if a vehicle fails to stop from behind. This is something I always do at red lights or stop signs. And there's the you can either be in first gear, neutral, whatever it is you feel like being in. A lot of people say first gear. That way you can accelerate out of there. But I'm going to tell you right now, you do not have that reaction time to accelerate out of there if for the last second you decide you have to gun it. Okay, so being in neutral, being in first, it's up to you. Let your hand, you know, relax so you're not having to pull in the clutch all the time. But at least, at minimum, be off-centered, almost like you're going to lane filter. So the situation that freaks out a lot of people out on highways or intersections is the merging car. When you start to come upon a ramp with a car merging, move over one lane and give yourself plenty of space. Always do a head check and check your mirrors before switching lanes. You never know, there might be a car there. But this is a pretty simple turn. All right, so we got people merging. I don't know if this white truck's gonna move into my lane or this guy's gonna jump all the way to my lane because he doesn't wanna be that close to that white truck. So I don't know what he wants to do. So I'm gonna switch on over here. Now I see his brake lights. I think I see his brake lights. Those must be running lights. Those are running lights. All right, so I'm gonna get out of his blind spot. So now I want him to be able to see me. So now I'm, in, yeah, there it is. He switched over. He was waiting for me. So most drivers don't even care. They'll just take it. I say this all the time and it kind of goes back to my EMT firefighting skills is that ride within your own limits. I talk about scope of practice as an EMT. You can only work within what you know. Do not try to overextend yourself. So what does it mean? You know, I say it all the time. What are your limits? How do you figure out your limits before it's too late? If you ever get into a situation that causes a slight panic, that is your limit for that hazard. A car turning in front of you in the intersection can easily cause that panic moment. Same for entering a corner way too fast. Panic must be avoided because humans tend to make mistakes. When we make a mistake on the motorcycle, we can crash. So we can't be making mistakes out there. If we can make mistakes in a practice session on a controlled environment, in a parking lot, that's perfectly fine, dropping the bike at low speeds, but if we make a mistake out on the road, anything at a higher rate of speed is extremely deadly. Prevent these panic moments by looking for them ahead of time. That car coming out, well, it won't cause you a panic anymore because you saw it ahead of time. You rolled off the throttle and you were prepared for emergency maneuvers. You controlled the situation by knowing it was there in the first place. If practiced every ride, your limits will increase. 
I put that down because every time you ride is a practice session. Treat it as a practice session. You see that pothole or you see that manhole cover right there? Practice a swerve. Just nice and easy, go st straight towards it and then swerve around it. That is a practice session. So just like having a skate path, choose a favorable lane position. We kind of talked about that when you stop at a stoplight, you position yourself left or right of the car in front of you. That way if a car does not stop, they hit the car and hopefully not hit you. It's kind of like that, but now we're talking about when we're actually riding. So a good lane position allows you to be seen and for you to see oncoming hazards. When you ride behind a vehicle, it is often best to position yourself in the left-hand portion of your lane so oncoming drivers can see you. Same can be said about the right portion of the lane. If there are people wanting to enter the roadway from the right, position yourself to the right side so you can be seen. If you are following a large vehicle and cannot see around them, slow down to increase your space cushion or change lanes. Slowing down will give you the larger total braking distance. Changing lanes will give you a new line of sight so you can see ahead of the vehicle. Never be static in your lane position. Always maneuver around lane position one, two, and three of your lane so you can avoid hazards in any of those. Now, if there's a massive hazard that's blocking one, two, and three, try your best to ride on the shoulder or switch to a different lane if there is another lane. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep my brakes on, keep an eye on this truck, and practice my slow speed. So now that I'm in this position, I feel a little bit more comfortable. And I'm just practicing my slow speed. There we go. Now I'm gonna get into a better position. Okay, is this a better position? Uh, no, it's not. I can't see very far around this truck, so I'm gonna get back in this position. So you count, you constantly variable. I don't even know what I'm saying. Constantly vary your stuff. <laughs> if this is a better position, great. If this is a bad position just because there's a, a, a jerk that is sitting right on the line, then it's not. So you might have to check the other side. You're constantly moving back and forth, but every time you go from here, danger, safe. So safe, danger, safer if you're right behind a vehicle you're in a bad spot so right here i see this white car coming out so i'm actually going to present myself i want to be visible line of sight to you guys there you go i'm here okay so now i'm going to kind of slow down i don't know what's around this now i know what's around the turn you see what i mean you slow down you get cautious when you can't see because of trees and then you can feel better when you can see around all right so we got a bump right here we got a railroad track so once again Got a great question from A.A. Ron on my Patreon when it comes to all these things because I did send on my Patreon the full list of what I'm talking about here so you get, they could see it early. Uh, but he asks, coming up to a stoplight single lane behind a large truck, there is a right turn lane. What lane position should I take? Position one to be seen by incoming traffic and would have to use that incoming lane for an escape path or position three so that I could possibly use the turn lane as an escape path. Now, I would always bet on myself. Now, my first gut instinct is to make sure I have enough escape paths. I want to be in control of my own destiny. I don't like it that other drivers are on the road. I honestly don't. They're all hazards. They're all landmines, whatever you want to call it. Remember what I said earlier is that we want to ride like we're invisible. I said I don't like that phrase too much. I like to ride like nobody can see me. I'm not invisible. I'm here. I want to be seen. With most cars... They will see you or they don't. I'm not going to trust that. So positioning yourself in a better spot to be seen, that's great. Keep doing it. It gives you uh, the best bet that you can possibly have. But if you don't have a really good position, make sure you have at least an escape path. Make sure you have that escape path just in case they don't see you. It's great and all to be off to the left in this situation, but you don't have an escape path. So now you're leaving it up to the Murphy's Law and hopefully nobody will hit you. I would position myself in this situation in position three so that I have that escape path to the right, which is that right turn lane. So thank you for that question, Aaron. Um, I'm going to go ahead and write what I said and answer your question. I wanted to answer it in video format, but that's exactly uh, the type of questions that I truly love inside the comments. I try to answer them the best I can. So guys, if you have any questions, make sure you write them in the comments. If you have your own stories about close calls or if you have your own tips, Let's do it. You know, let's share it along. We only learn if we're we're helping each other. Okay. With that said, I hope you ride safe, be safe, and I'll be seeing you around.